Hello, Jim Dramatic here. Welcome to a brand new episode of Robot Wars Episode Reviews. We're on to Heat L. Um, and after quite a decent heat, uh, we end up going to sort of... Eh. Heat again. Uh, unfortunately, the, 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 the next three heats are really good, but uh, we've got, we sometimes got occasionally got to get through the mediocre ones. And joining me, once again, is Sally at 64. Hi guys, um, this fun story, uh, this is actually the very... I mean, okay, I, I don't know whether it's the first one I ever watched or the first one I remember. Ooh. But um, Ooh. but this this is this is the one I I very vividly remember, you know, cheering on quote unquote the Beatle one to win. So um, <laughs> uh, I, I was a big fan of Evil Weevil. I think I was about three or four years old when this aired. Really? So, um, oh wow. Yeah. So this this is the earliest episode of Road Wars I can remember very clearly. Like I, I don't remember much before this. Hmm. So um, I, I I consider this the first ep- ever episode that I saw. I love. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm like yeah, original like series two, watching yeah, se- I, I watching was, watching I all mean, those se- watched all the series one on repeats, and I was like ready for series ready for series three. I was I was, I was a bit uh, I was a bit too young to, to see series two. I was only, you know, I was only three or four when this happened, so I would have been two. Uh, uh, I would have been six at the time. So yeah, yeah so I was I was I was a wee lad. So um. Ultimately, I think that's that's the the earliest I can remember was this episode, and then after this, I was I was hooked. Really, I think you know, that, I, I, which is kind of weird because this heat isn't that great. But um, <laughs> as, as as we're about to discover, but it's it's weird that I, this was the heat that kind of it got me into it. But the thing is, with um, you know, with this heat, I think you know the, the robots themselves are all very interesting and colourful, I and mean, then that's probably what attracted me to it. Yeah, it's, it seems like this series has been like you and Anderson's like. Yeah, you know, nostalgia ones because this this is your this this was your first heat. Anderson was Heat yeah. I, which which is also not the best heat in the world. So it's yeah. weird that you both started and kind of the least interesting heats and ra- surrounded by decent heats as well. That's the funny thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. But um, <laughs> no, you know what? I, I I still enjoy this heat for what it is, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, it's, I don't, pretty, it's pretty good. I mean, as as mediocre as the actual battles are, I I mentioned them in a review briefly last time, but. The robots are at least all different looking and interesting. There isn't like a single non-interesting looking robot in this heat. Yeah, they've, just... they've, all, they've all got their own. Um, they've all got their own uh, benefits and uh, weaknesses, haven't they? So yeah, they're just they're just the battles aren't that interesting. Yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's not, that's not, that's just due to like the time and uh, how robots has kind of died in these. Uh, as as um, Simon Harrison said a few weeks ago, because the ro- the robots were at the time there was it was still very new technology. No, no, no one really knew what to do. Hmm. Um, so I guess on that we'll start with the uh, heat winner, and they got very lucky in their heat final, granted. But you know, one if, if if you have a member of the Panic Attack team, your robot's gonna be great, right? Uh, um, well, yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's a uh, evil weevil. Hey, uh, the thing is, all right, as you know, they say they got lucky in the heat final. I can't see any possible way that Panzer would have beaten them anyway. Oh, of course not. Um, but, but even it, even still, I think you know, the, you know, granted they were fortunate. But they they dominate the heat, and as you said, you know the, the robot was difficult to drive. I think you know you, you guys slated uh, Evil Weevil for being like um, quite difficult to drive, which it, it was clearly. You know there, there are a lot of uh, interference issues to the uh, uh, Evil Weevil, and um, you know it's I, I I liked it. I thought it was a really cool robot. That's just me though. No, I I like Evil Weevil, but I don't, I, get, I mean you say it dominates heat. I'd say it got two very easy opponents. Personally, three, three, three. Well, you, well, I, if if Hans was working, it would have been a little bit more. Ch- it would have tried a bit harder than its other two opponents. Its other two opponents, one, one was one, one could barely drive because how awkward it was, and one was like a really slow thwack bot. So I don't think really it had massive competition. But no, but but even even still, it was quite. It was still quite cool. Like but, I, I I I enjoyed even with. I think in most other heats as well, it probably would have at least made the heat final. Yeah, I mean it's series four first. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus I, I, Christ! I mean, again, it, again, it had the batteries been working, it would have probably walked that heat, but they weren't. So I believe, I believe, were they the highest seed to go out in the first round? I think they were seed they twelve. Ju- they just beat Gravedigger, yeah, because yeah, Gravedigger was... were thirteen. Yeah, number then they were number twelve, and it's yep. all because they didn't pick the battery that was fully charged. But it's but that's how you know sometimes <laughs> these things happen. You know, it's, it's, it's true. It's it's a shame because I think again that would have been nice to see how they could have done. I think they could have done really well that series. To be honest with you, I think it would have been uh, a force to be reckoned with. But sadly, it wasn't to be. I mean, I agree. I think that heat was pretty much theirs if it had been fully working. I mean, it wasn't. Who else, it, who else is going to beat them? Let's be, let's be real here. The only robot that would have posed a, a decent threat was probably something or Tiberius, and that's that's saying a lot. 
but yeah, maybe Weldorf. Ba- it hadn't broke down, but you know, <laughs> you know, it's. I mean, Evil Weevil's also. Uh, we can't forget Evil Weevil's the only robot to win a football tournament without scoring a single goal. Uh, uh, well, again, you say you say you say that, but like the thing is, it it, it was a worthy winner because it, it did. It was the only one working in the final, which therefore it has to win, and it was only one working in its in its first round, and it had to win that as a result. Yeah, is is, is this is this like your defend Evil Weevil? Podcast? No, no, it's it's not it's not that. It's just I just. I, I get the you know I do it's frustrating that they never actually scored a goal and they won the football which is kind of ridiculous in itself but I I, I don't know I never I never had any ill will for Evil Weevil. Oh, I I I don't really have evil, ill will for it either. I just I don't know. It's just one of those robots that I I generally forget was a semi finalist. It's one of those ones I, I I mean a lot of people slate. I'm not saying it's in the same league as something like Blade or Trident or something, but it's in that kind of like forgettable realm for me. I don't know why, but yeah. like because because I think because because they barely did anything in Series Four as well. It didn't really yeah, help. They they, they 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 had a blessed run in series three, but which you know I, you know, but so, then again, so did Razor. So mm. did uh, and to yeah, their K- to their credit yeah. though, they didn't get that destroyed against Hit the Disc. Even though the disc wasn't fully working, they still didn't like get any like body armor completely ripped off. It was just like a few side bits that fell off. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think that's that's a really good. Um, you know, that, that was that was a fight which I, I was impressed with. Even with, but again, you know, they they were struggling for control as well. They they could have won that fight mm. in, in realism like, if they'd have got underneath and had been fully working but sadly it wasn't to be yeah it's just i think personally if they had if the driving was slightly better evil wheel could have been a really good really f- big force to be reckoned with but yeah just, just like panic attack they could, they could have been on the same level as panic attack exactly but on four... especially, especially in series four when they had the axe yes but unlike panic attack after series four i think didn't didn't um didn't kevin just join back with panic attack after series in series five no no that was that was an extreme two i think it was oh, and, okay. not, and obviously kim went to the um production t- team and then uh, Kevin Pritchard took over Panic Attack in its entirety but um, yeah it was um, I think that was which, was which I thought was quite cool but um, no Evil Weevil I think the, you know the cost of uh, having two robots at once so to speak I think because ba- let's face it Evil Weevil was basically light Panic Attack wasn't it so yeah pretty much <laughs> but, so, I mean, right, but, right, right, down, right down to the gigantic forks as well <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 I like Evil Weevil. I thought Evil Weevil looked cooler than um, Panic Attack did. That's that's a controversial statement in itself. It's got a better design like, to it, but I, li- I like the way aesthetically it is. More I think, than Panic I, I think yeah. the reason why I seem to not like Evil Weevil as much, I think it's just because it seems one of those robots that just never lived up to any potential it should have had. Like I see, it, I, mean, but, but, I mean, series three at least they gave a good go of it, but in series four, I think it's more frustrating. Obviously, you, know, you say these mistakes can happen. I understand that. But at the same time, it's sort of just like, oh, it was like this. It was a very small error as well, and it could have been like their heat and everything, and it's still just kind of like. Yeah, well, it, I mean, uh, I mean like, let's 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 look at the um, you know, let's look at uh, the modern series. You know, the raising overbalancing and toppling in the pit with Kitty Cranky. Though these things happen, you know. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's just a, a the smallest things that can go against you and. You finished, really? I mean, we look. We look at look at. Um, I mean, look at kilohertz in a couple of heats time. <laughs> oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> I can't wait for. I can't wait for that one. But uh, yeah, evil weevil. It's it's fine, but it just it, it doesn't do it for you. No, just 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 for me personally, it's never been that you know that high rank for me. And um, controversially, speaking of which, is the I actually really loved the the one who didn't do anything in the semi in their heat final. Sadly, was um, was Panzer. <laughs> I, I actually like Panzer, quite quite. I, I, I like Panzer. Panzer fun, again, another fun story. The, the dude who built Panzer replaced the boiler in my house. So what, what, what a weird connection. <laughs> yeah. So um, thank you for repairing my boiler or replacing my boiler. I can't remember which one it was, but um, Simon yeah. jo- Simon Jones. I'm just looking for the names of the team members. I, I, I don't I don't know who it was. I can't remember the name. But um, one of the dudes who was replacing my boiler entered Panzer in Robot Wars, and I was like, oh. <laughs> As, as as like an eight year old, nine year old who after Rope was it obviously finished, I was like, Oh, that's really cool. Hmm. Like, you know, and it's it's interesting. And I, I agree with, you know, the the look of Panzer is awesome, you know, it's got the big tread tracks, it's it looks like a, a like a machine that you'd see on Robot Wars. It's it's you know, it's a big hunking great thing. Um I don't think it would I think it got quite lucky in itself in its run to the heat final. I mean Undertaker's axe didn't work if it was working. Then... The, whole, the whole robot wasn't working, in fairness. 
Well, no, it's true. But uh, had it been working, could it have beaten Panzer? Yes, it would have just chopped the track, the track straight off. Or, or, or even then, it could have just rammed up him on the scoop and then pushed him into a pit or a sidewall or something like that. I mean, it was built. I mean, both of both of, of the opponents that it faced had were, were sort of wedges. So it was. Yeah. Kind of, so, it, so, I mean, and, and track Challenger could have um, ripped Panzer's tracks off as well. Yeah, I so, mean, uh... there's, there's no other robot with tracks that looks just like that looks like Panzer. Even tracks, the one called tracks. Looks it just yeah. like this. This like defines a tracked robot for me. Just it's just huge tracks, like you know, completely you know vulnerable. But it doesn't matter because it just looks cool. It sort of reminds yeah. me of um, was it a Rhino the uh, the army's entry in the Extreme series later on? I, I mean, that's another robot I, I like just purely because of the fact they've just put all these big tracks in it. They don't care. It's just yeah. there and they also had a saw, but obviously we learn in the next heat certain saws are not allowed and. It was not. I mean, in fairness, it would have ruined the uh, invert, the invertible nature of it anyway. So I think the saw would have been a terrible idea, personally. Yeah. It, but, um... it looked it looked cool, but like, Panzer's one of those robots that it, again it did get slight looking in its heat, but it definitely showed it had a lot of pushing power. This robot, and it seemed durable despite the fact these tracks are massive on it. And then of course, they just didn't work. I mean, apparently they were having battery issues the entire heat anyway. Yeah, but... which again kind of it kind of shows what happened in the heat final. Yeah, it just. I, said, I wonder what happened in the heat farm. I wonder if they just just died. Like the robot was just like, oh, this is it. Then see you later, guys. I heard something. I don't know if this is true, but I heard apparently that they were going to redo it. But then apparently they were completely. They couldn't repair it, so they couldn't do a redo of it. Oh, because of killing like, like picking it up and. No, no, just no, just the internals in general. They just had, didn't know, have enough time to fix it in the time frame they were oh, given. Right. Oh, I, I, I heard something about that. I heard they were because they were going because obviously since it's the heat farm, they thought, well, we've got to give them. Yeah, this 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 seems a bit. And to come back. That's why the killer didn't really do any damage to it. it just flicked. It just kind of yeah. picked it up. Yeah. So then they tried it again, and they went in and like, no, we can't really fix this. So they went, well, in that case, you just have to lose, unfortunately. But I mean, I, I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard. And if it is, it's a bit of a shame, really. But and they came back later with Panzer Panzer Wrath, which is just was that was that was that them as well? Yeah, it was the same team. Yeah, Panzer Wraith. Yeah. I, oh, I, I, I still don't know if it's Panzer Wrath or Wraith, but um, yeah. I think it's, I think it's Wraith. Pan, Wraith. Panzer Wraith. I, I, they, they said Panzer Wraith. No, no, the dude announcing it said Panzer Wrath, but. Everyone else is Panzer Wraith, so I, I, I call it Wraith. In fact, the announcer is bad with pronouncing names, especially Dan Dan Tomkier. My God, God. Stuart, Stuart McDonald, you absolutely, you had a fantastic voice, but my God, you need to learn how to speak. I, I, <laughs> I, I think he said the name Dieter at least three different ways. Dieter, Dieter. I actually, no, no, my favorite was in series three. So he called him Dieter. <laughs> like, Dieter. 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 Like, it's not even spelt that way, and so I managed to pronounce. I mean, and, uh, I mean, my, my favorite though was Dan Tomkier is Dan Tomakaya. Just what yeah. is what is like? I, I I I if I was him, I would have found out how to pronounce every robot before I said anything. But yeah, I mean, Panzer Wraith, they failed to qualify for Series Four, and then they appeared in the Extreme, an Extreme um, Annihilator battle with Exterminator and Cataclysmic Variobot, and they yep. la- granted they lasted, but unfortunately, Exterminator just the perfect robot to just punch through their attacks and get them into the pit. So I mean, yeah. I I can't, I'd much rather see them in Series Four to be honest, with you, but. Oh well, I mean, it's it's a shame because I, I I like Panzer. Panzer's a nice robot. It is. It's just it's just a very rugged robot. It's just a. It looks like something like a bomb disposal unit would use. Yeah. But, yeah. This is the only time we really see Panzer like, do anything really good. So en- enjoy it while it lasts. This is Panzer. Yeah. This is Panzer. Uh, um. Now a robot that I, oh I I I I, I don't really like that much, but. Uh, they go into greater things, at least, so that is more yes. important. Uh, yes, flip, flip, flop, fly. The slowest thwack bot I've seen in my life next to Armageddon. Um, it, it's it's flip, flop, fly. Yeah, it really, it's just, like, the actual axe on it is very, very, very tiny. It's just like some tiny little piece of metal they put on it, and then the robot, apparently the, the battery doesn't even last the entire fight, half the time. So, they didn't even have a battery that could last three minutes, or five minutes, so... <laughs> kind of doomed from the start, really. I mean, they, they're very. I mean, I'm surprised they even got this far, to be honest with you. But yeah. I mean, it, this is the guys who make tetanus, thankfully, because honestly, this is their only entry. I'd be kind of, I'd be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'd be disappointed. I'd just be kind of like, oh, there's another terrible series three flakbot. It's not too bad. I mean, it looks good. Again, you know, the, the very bright and colourful. It has a lot of um, personality about it, but. Um... Uh, yeah. I mean, thank goodness, thank goodness for tetanus, eh? 
You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Tetris is awesome. I I I, I like uh, the. Especially... Uh, the si- my, I... my favorite is the series. My favorite is the series six version, personally. I no, sorry, no series I... five version. Sorry. I, I, I like both versions of uh, Tetris. I don't particularly like Tetris Booster, but that's because it's a, just a it's a bad tornado. It kind of is, but I, I, I like the kind of drum spinner idea they're going for. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, again, I have nothing wrong with it. It's, it's a very interesting and pretty cool robot, but I, I prefer um, Tetris One and Two. I think I like I think I like about Tetris is the fact they look very junkyard, particularly Tetris Booster and Tetris Two. Yeah. I mean, the original Tetris looks a little bit too clean, while the other ones are just kind of very kind of. They'll actually be made out of scrapyard pieces, which is pretty. I mean, literally, Tetanus Two looks like it's like a pile of scrap together. But mm. uh, and even, and Flip Flop Fly, it's it's just there. Like it's one of those robots. That, it's probably the probably the I would one of the not definitely one of the wor- worst, relatively speaking, the worst robots of this heat. But I mean, they got very lucky in their first round. But it's just so, I think it's just the speed of it really lets me down. Like if it if it was like fast, it could be like like it couldn't like Stinger kind of entertainingly you know bonkers. But here, yeah, it's just... St- St- Stinger, Stinger just really wants to know. But uh, flip flop fly, it's not too bad. It's not bad. It's just, it is just flip flop fly. That's the best way to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the other robot managed to make it to the uh, second round was, of course, Challenger Two. Um, this is basically what happens when you get Challenger and just stick loads of spikes on it. And skirts. Uh, and skirts and some little drum thing that doesn't do anything. Then you get Challenger Two, which honestly looks almost identical to the original one. Let's face it. I I like the look of Challenger Two. I I, I like the look of both challenges actually, to be honest. But um, you know, Challenger Two again was uh, unlucky in this heat, really. But um, you know, it was it was all right. It was it was there and it did some stuff, and that's about it, really. Yeah, it's it's really slow, Challenger 2. Like, the original Challenger was not the fastest robot in the world, but at least had decent and average top speed. This thing's like four miles an hour. Yeah. And it's like, it's built like a bit, it's just basically built like a tank, really, to kind of deflect stuff. But yeah. it, like, I've never really remembered, this is one of those robots, again, I just never really remembered. It's Challenger, because I always keep forgetting there was a second Challenger, until I actually have to watch the heats again. Yep. And also, this is the guy who, um, because I think he drove one of the stock robots in Series 1, I Yes, believe. that's correct, yeah. He, he, you he, banked, he was them, out. You banked yeah. them out, yeah. And uh, obviously he's come back again this time, and he's made his own robot, and again, and it's, it's again, it actually at least improved on it, because Challenger was okay, but its biggest problem, so it's, one of the problems is the ground clearance is so high, and it has weapons, work, and it wasn't really offensive. Like now, now it's finally able to push stuff and actually do stuff, but they just got very lucky against Panzer in some ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Panzer has got pushing power. And they learnt the hard way. But, uh... Why is there not much to say about Challenger 2 either? It's just a spiky Challenger. Yeah. <laughs> spiky Challenger. Yeah, Ch- Challenger's uh, pretty damn good. You know, you know, he's an absolute... It's, 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 it's alright. It's all right. I mean, it, it, but in, in most of the heats, um, again, probably would have done pretty good. It was just an unlucky... Uh... Hmm. Just put in a lucky hit. I think it was uh, it was quite a decent robot. It wasn't. It was never going to win the series. I mean, let's be honest. No. I'm no Shrimac, but I mean, it was. Um, yeah, it's 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 all right. You know. Actually, a fun fact. Actually, that uh, Steve Dove, the driver and creator of the um, Challenger robots, actually joined GBH two in Series six as a team member. All right. I I I just found that on the wiki. Now I was just looking for. It, I was like, oh, I'd never known that if I hadn't checked that. <laughs> yeah. The more you know, the more you know. Um, now, I will be honest with you, every single robot that lost in the first round has something interesting about them. I'd say more so than the robots that made it to the second round. Um, I'll start with Atlas, because... <laughs> At- I love Atlas. I love Atlas. I know, I love Atlas. I'm just thinking of the mo- the certain moment in its battle. That is... Where the head comes off. The best, most precise shot the ro- oh, shunt ever did. Oh, I mean, I thought the one on Major Tom in Series Four was pretty good, but this one's uh, pretty spectacular, isn't it? I mean, the bullet holes was pretty good in Series Two as well, but actually, for some reason, Shunt seems to have yeah. a thing of knocking off heads of like toys and stuff, and I, I don't get what he's I don't get. He did it with Ban, did it with Banshee as well, and yeah, he seems to take offence to things that you know have anatomy, and he wants to just rip the heads off as much as possible. Uh, well, well, it's you know. It's a way to get ahead in life, isn't it, really? Oh, I see what we did there. I see what we did there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like, you like, you like that? Yeah? Yeah, I liked come, it. Come subscribe to Sabalit64 for more of that. 
I mean, that, this... that, pl- that plug was unbelievable. I do apologize. I don't, don't, don't do it. Unsubscribe for me right now. No, uh, actually, no, just just watch the hardcore podcast and get it. It's better. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it, no, it is. It's true. It's true. It's true. Um, actually, because this team were thud last series, and they didn't I think they appeared in one of the super heavyweight battles, but didn't actually get to appear in the main series because of some issues. Right. Uh, and now it's basically it looks like it's exactly the same as thud, but it's the opposite way around. <laughs> Literally, it's the same huh. shape. Like, it's, I think it's the, I think actually they use the same chassis. From Thud, because it's just like it's the same thing with like a saw at the back, you know, slopes down to the front. Is but it, if, in fairness, I mean, you know, you, you say that because obviously um, uh, GBH used the same chassis as uh, Scrapper, didn't it? So it was it was kind of a thing that you did in these days to cut costs. Oh, it's not, but it's not. I, I don't really mind people. I mean, didn't um, yeah, Simon Harrison used the same chassis for King for King books in Series Three as well? Um, yeah, and uh, um, um, but yeah, but. The, the same base plate was used on um, jellyfish and ice cream as it was on jellyfish. So yeah, and um, I mean the only difference in Atlas and Thud is that Thud was a tractor robot and Atlas is a, a robot with wheels. And Joe, you know I'm going to blame Philippa for the the, the fact they lost because she drained the ba- she might have drained the battery <laughs> just playing that little in the intro. She actually, I don't know if she was meant to touch the robot or not, but she set something off. <laughs> and the robot just died. Little little figure started spinning around doing its thing. Brilliant. Brilliant. I don't even know why it's called Atlas because it's it's not like a god it has it got anything to do with the gods. It hasn't got anything to do with a book. It's just it's just massive. It, this it's robot just... is huge. Yeah. <laughs> it is one point one. It's part one point four four meters in some dimension. I, don't, I think it's width. I think that's. A, I think it's. I think it's one, almost one and a half meters. It's, it's a yeah. It's it's a big robot, isn't it? Let's face it. So it's a, um... it's a big robot that could do absolutely nothing. <laughs> Um, yes. I'll go on to my next one. Cause, uh, possibly my favourite uh, robot from the first round, purely because of how weird it is, is um, Triterrobot. I, yep. What is this thing? I love Triterrobot so much. There's just so much wrong with it, it makes it so right. I agree. It's, it gets almost everything wrong, but it's so creative, I don't really care. Um, I mean, this is obviously the Mousetrap team. Yep. Uh, and then they make uh... black, and then Black and Blue in Series 7. Yep, that's um, correct. And every single time they make a robot that looks completely unique and different, which I, I like that. I, I like that about this team. That they've, it's been like, been like Team Death. They never come in with the same robot twice. It's the only different, obviously, I think, well, obviously, a, a robot design twice, because obviously they come with the uh, Mousetrap in Series 5 as well, but when they change the design... They but yeah, but Ma- Mousetrap was very different to uh, in Series 5 than it was in... Uh... Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it was in Series... Uh... Uh, I'm not saying... Oh, yeah, it's different, but it's the same basic... It's the same design. It's not like, you know, they go through a cluster bot in Series 5. Yeah, but, I mean, I I don't understand what the smoke screen was in this battle. I don't know if that was a mistake or it was meant to happen. I I, I still don't know because it, it didn't affect anything, <laughs> the entire robot. But I mean, I think it was um, I think it was actually more a um, a what's the word I'm after? It was um, it was a motor. I think it was that was uh, burning up rather than an actual smoke screen. But um, you know, it was uh. I love Triterrobot because it's just so wacky. Like you've, I've mm. never seen a, a robot shaped like that, that looks like that, that goes like that before. It's just, it's fabulous, isn't it? It's just so much good about it, and it's it's fantastic. You know? it's, it's 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 the it's the kind of aspect of robot was I love when you get these kind yeah. of robots to come in that are just <laughs> on a technical level pretty useless, but are so beautiful and so well made, yeah. and it's just who cares. Like yeah, who exactly. cares how? I mean, it's, this robot was this robot was never going to pass the first round. It's never ever, it's never ever going to win a fight, but it's still it's still great nonetheless. Mm. I mean, the only two things that I found I don't understand about this robot. I think the steering was very awkward. I mean, this robot yeah. has to stop, turn its entire wheels round, and then turn. And it looked like multiple times it was broken down. In reality, it was just turning. <laughs> and also, how did this robot get stuck on its side? <laughs> I don't get it. It it. <laughs> I mentioned it in the in the review last team, but I found that there's that one moment where it gets stuck, and you see the team, and you can tell like the father or the son is saying like you know turn the wheels. He's like I am, and it's just <laughs> he's turning it, and it just poor, stays. Poor Jason. I mean, I I do like this team really. You know, I I like um I like the the launch bruise as a as a team. You know, they're good fun, um and you know the, these guys are they've, they've did, they did a good job with the uh, Triterrobot. They're a very underrated team, I think. Because it yeah, always comes absolutely. some creative. I mean, even if Mousetrap's not that great, it's still quite a unique robot. It, you know, it, Mousetrap got a semi-final out of it, which I mean, okay. It's more than expected. It's more than expected. 
probably would never have happened if Eva Weaver was actually working in Series 4, I know. But hmm. it still did, and it still oh. did quite a decent job. And then in Series 5, it did a decent job against Death 3. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, 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 there were only real dis- massive disappointments, probably Black and Blue, which didn't really... Yeah, but that was against Firestorm, and it was a cluster bar in those days, which didn't have the same kind of drive power that they do now, so, you know. It was no Crackers and Smash, I'll say that. Well, cr- Crackers and Smash only works because the drive systems have advanced so much that a, a, effectively a featherweight can push a heavyweight around, is, hmm. essentially. That's right. So the drive system the, the drive system in Crackers and Smash is, is, I know it's not a featherweight drive system, it's, it's all brushless, I think, but um, the way that it works is that it's strong enough to push anything twice its own weight around so it's no it's no problem they're, they're good enough to be heavyweights themselves hmm. also tri didn't get an introduction or they were like stegosaurus um and coincidentally they're both um barnyard animals yes so i mean obviously i've i have to mend that now because because we, we also have evil weevil as our first barnyard representative now we have tri as the second one so yeah awesome <laughs> I mean that was try to we'll get to him in this battle, but yeah, yeah this yeah. this robot's weird. <laughs> I, I I love it. It's so it's so weird. It's great. Oh yeah, I love it because it's so weird. Yeah. Um, I'll go to one I felt quite sorry for was um Undertaker. Oh, yeah. this this is a robot that clearly got screwed over by some kind of interference. Cause... yeah, but that's that's just how it works. That's, you know, ev- everyone had the same problems, didn't they? So it's a shame because this robot's quite fast and it has a quite a nice wedge on it. And unlike Gravedigger, it actually looks like a coffin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but some something went wrong with this robot. I mean, it just kept spinning in circles, didn't it, the entire match? Yeah. And it was completely out of control. And if it had been working, this robot could have easily tried, had a good go against Panzer. I think, it would, I think as I said earlier, you know, I think the axe, let's face it, would have gone straight through the tracks. So, um, well, I, <laughs> the, the, you know... So it would have had a lot of better traction, that's for sure. Uh, oh. Ironic, given that Panzer's on tracks, so, you know, traction. <laughs> get it? Okay. But um, <laughs> but um, you know, I think Undertaker, as you say, was was a more was a better attempt at a coffin robot than uh, than uh, Gravedigger was. So uh, yeah, I, I liked Undertaker for what it was, but you know, it, it was unlucky, and that's that's just how it goes sometimes. Yeah, I mean, this was the this was a uh, havoc in the last series. Um, okay. A massive improvement over Havoc because Havoc was just sort of a box with loads of high ground films with a mace on it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and... <laughs> that's, 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 that's literally what it was. Yeah, and this time they actually they actually made a robot <laughs> that actually looks looks like no. a, it looks com- on, on Robot Wars. Or- <laughs> and it, it looks really competent. And then they failed to qualify with a robot called Havoc, uh, not Havoc, um, Cannibal in Series Four. Oh, right. Um, there's no actual proper picture of it. There's just a little, little childish like concept drawing of it on on the wiki, and that's it. Oh, right. So I, 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 it looks like some kind of little wedge, um, but I think it, I think it, I think it lost to Bulldog Breed, from what I heard. So no, that's not that's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame there. No, there's no shame. But yeah, I never got, never saw these guys again. But god damn it, Undertaker's pretty decent for what it is. Yeah. Uh, and finally, um, if you want to have bad driving and a good robot. Look no further than Wild Willy. <laughs> Wild Willy looked decent, you know. <laughs> oh no, no, I love Wild Willy, but my God, driving, driving—it's the key. Driving, it driving. Is... <laughs> just, I'll be saying that to my, you know, to 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 my grave. I'll be shouting driving because this <laughs> driving! is driving, <laughs> driving. I mean, it's like it's like I think it's majority of robot combat is your driving skills. I mean, you can have a really crap, you can have a really crap weapon. But my god, if you could drive the robot really well, it's it's half the battle. And yes. and I I know Dave Laurie mentioned on your Chris, on your um celebrity Christmas special thing about driving, and I was like, it's it's a lot harder. Than, you know, when you you, you, don't, you don't press go, you just don't you know just just don't go, you know go in the way you want it to go. Anything can go wrong. But uh to to drive into the pit after winning after winning most majority of your battle, it's kind of it's kind of annoying. <laughs> After, I mean, this robot is pretty. It's pre, it's really well made. It's a flywheel axe, which I think Mortis also had, because you can tell it's yeah. one of those fast firing axes. Also, anarachophobia so, so, as well. Yeah, sort sort of like um the one that Killatron had in series two. Yeah, it's a very 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 fast axe, but they don't usually have very much power behind them most the time. They're just there for a lot. They hit a lot of things hard, but very very lightly. But yeah, I mean, this thing did manage to puncture a tire on some things. I can't complain too much. But yeah, exactly. It was it was it was very. 
aggressive and look. It, you know, I love the the eye. It kind of looked like a fly. Do you know oh, what I mean by that? I think it's like a praying mantis. I think that's what Alex said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, look, it looks sort of like a like a fly. Um, and um, you know, the, the purple paintwork looks really cool. Um, because I'm I'm a sucker for purple things. I don't, I don't know why. I just like the color purple. So purple pur- purple predator is also on for you. Oh, purple predator just it makes me <laughs> makes me moist. It really does. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm j- no, I'm joking. Obviously, um, but you know, purple. Purple Predator, Purple Predators, whatever it is, but um, Wild Willy, the Purple Willy. Um, it's actually the one thing. It, this axe is so powerful; it would lift itself off the ground multiple times whilst whacking, you know, while whilst trying to hit something. And it, again, driving. Dri- yeah, driving, driving. Dri- driving. I mean, actually, they came out with Cyrax, and to their credit, oh, that was, oh, that, was that team. Uh, that, that was Cyrax. You can tell it's got exactly the same axe on it. I was going to say, I, I can now see the similarity, yeah. It's got, it's got the same axe as, as Wild Willy. Look at it. It's identical. If not, it's based... In fairness, based... there's, there's, there's elements of the chassis that are the same as well. Yeah. But actually, to its cl- this, this robot's credit, right, they did really well. And they actually, they gave Razor a run for their money. They lasted the full, you know, the full time with Razor. They actually got a yep. few flips in. They actually got, you know, they actually lasted all the way and they didn't actually get broken down once. They were still going at the same power they started in. Yep. And... It was just very unlucky they happened to be in that heat. So I think they could have been a heat finalist in any in a lot of in a lot of heats in series six. But as is, well, again, Wild Willy could have been the, could have done the same thing. But ah, yeah. because uh, they could have beaten they could have beaten um. Yeah, actually, yeah. Actually, actually, I wouldn't say they could have beaten. They would have had a good go at least. But yeah. also, also the wedge doesn't actually just touch the ground, of course, because it's robot. Well, wars. it's because series three, yeah. Yeah, actually, no, anything past. Actually, anything around series three and below, you're not gonna have a wedge to touch the ground very often, unless it's chaos two. Yeah. <laughs> even Cassius couldn't even get that right half the time. Well, it, well, it, did. it, had, the, it had the kickstand, didn't it? Sorry. Oh, it did, but the fact they would sometimes just leave the wedge just up in the air, just like keep it yeah. down at all times. That's that's the yeah. That's, that's, that's the thing. Well, in fairness, you know, a lot of other people, um, a lot, a lot of other machines, like um, didn't have a. Uh, didn't have low ground clearances anyway, so they could just they could have just kept it where it was and just drive underneath it. Yeah, but uh, I feel sorry for Wild Willy, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and I guess speaking of Wild Willy, we get to the they are in the first battle against uh, Flip Flop Fly and Wild Willy. Well, let's just say most of this match was Wild Willy dominating Flip Flop Fly pretty well. I mean, they were slam they slammed yeah. they gave him a good slam into the walls. They punctured one of their tires. With the axe somehow, <laughs> one of the hits happened to land on the tire and just got the hit. And then Flip Flop Fly is barely moving by this point. Its batteries are going low. Its one of its tires is gone. Uh, and what does what does driving? It, yeah, driving. Wild Willy drives onto the edge of the pit where I think it's Matilda who pushes them straight in. And then they and then they're trying to like they try to use the axe to try and garth the pit. <laughs> and it doesn't work. And then and then it's like yeah, the winner is Flip Flop Fly, and you see a shot of it barely just twitching. And it's like this is our he- this is our battle winner, folks. This is the first battle. Yep. T- Flip flop fly is just uh, just too strong, mate. It's too good. Oh man, this one of the better battles of the heat, in my opinion. Mainly because Flip- yeah. Wild Willy was actually really doing really well. And then, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, when, when I was watching this heat when I was younger, I was so disappointed. Yeah. I was so annoyed. I was just like, I wanted this. Real- I mean, it was because I think cause I hated Flip flop fly how bad it was. So I was just like, oh, I want this one to win. And then it. It drives into the pit. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, granted, yeah. I, I think they drove into the pit panicking because they got stuck on the arena spike, but they could have gone backwards, not forwards. I think it just panicked going forwards. And actually, there's one bit where they're actually on the edge of the pit and they could have gone backwards again, but they carried on going forwards more or further onto the pit. Yeah. <laughs> it was... It was hard to watch. It, it really was a, is. It was, it, was a, uh, it was a tough fight, wasn't it? So, um... It, well, tough, tough fight for them to watch. So yeah, there you go. Oh well, it does lead to a good quote though. That is silly, silly Billy, wild Willy. Yeah. Also, also is the... that, oh, Jonathan Jonathan Pierce and his quotes. <laughs> also, the fly hardly buzzing. <laughs> that sums up <laughs> that sums up flip flop fly to be honest with me. Yeah, that's that's not far off, is it really? No, but uh, due to bad driving, that's like the theme today. Driving, driving. Uh, flip flop fly fluked their way through. Like they like yep. like 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 they were supposed to apparently. Yep. Uh, next battle, challenger ver- challenger two versus Atlas. Um, this battle's not that interesting for the most part. A lot of it's just kind of a bit of shoving. Uh, yeah. ver- very very slow shoving. Because <laughs> both these robots can barely go past like six miles an hour. So 
But, you know, it, it is what it is. It is, and then Atlas dies on the wall. Because it's Although, I have to say, these, these two are probably the most, some of the best looking robots in the whole heat. They look, both look quite cool. Oh, they do. And, like, there's a little shove to the side wall. Then I think Atlas kind of drives onto one of the other side walls. Challenger pushes them into it slightly, and then they just die. Yeah. Uh, this, this, this is true. Yeah, it just died. Uh, I think the, I don't know what happened to it. So, so I mean, imagine this robot doesn't look very well structurally well Although, built. With, with that said, you know the, the amount of power the the, uh, the the toy on top's probably drawing is probably that. <laughs> it's yeah, the, the ba- they probably ran out of battery. Wouldn't surprise if they sacrificed that their actual robot for the toy. I, I wouldn't blame them. It was still going. It was still. It was still going. It's something I would do. To be fair, it was still going by the end of the battle until until the until the certain a certain moment where uh, Shunt decided to get rid of the head entirely, and actually that is one of my favourite shots of series three. Just the execution of the little toy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cruel, but it's great. It's actually they were really cruel to Atlas. Like they just they really went on. They really you know started really beating up Atlas. And it also made you realize how. But I think also another reason maybe why Atlas lost is that structurally it's not that well built because the shell the shell was flapping off this robot. Yeah. Like it barely and all the arm has been lifted up. That was it. And it was kind of I bet wasn't surprised it was like the witch where something just wobbled out of place and knocked it off combined with the toy draining a lot of the power. It was. It was kind of doomed to fail, Atlas, in many ways. But yeah, yeah, exactly. It looks nice though. So who really cares? <laughs> Atlas looks great. Yeah, it it's good. it's it's fabulous. But yeah, it's it's very fabulous. And well, that was a very easy win for Challenger too, honestly. But uh, the next next heat was a oh, an absolute flurry of what the hell's going on? Evil Weevil versus Triterabot. Th- this battle goes all over the place. I mean, yeah. you, get, you have Evil Weevil driving into the CPZ in, after, uh, into the, and, and again stuck in the spikes. Then Triterabot gets its spike embedded inside of Evil Weevil. <laughs> so much so that they're getting dragged around with each other. And then Triterabot smokes, like when the motors start smoking up. They get free, and then Evil Weevil tips them onto the side and they can't self right. It. I, I don't know what's happening in this battle, to be honest with you. It... <laughs> it, I mean, I don't, think that, I don't think the drivers knew what was going on in this battle. It's, it was one of them, wasn't it? I mean. You know, how, how do you fight a robot like? Do you know how like you know a lot of people are like how do you fight Miss Nightshade in a series in the latest series that's just gone? How do you fight Triterabot? <laughs> you know, it's just it's, it's, what do you do? It's like it's, it's the same robot on every angle, so you can't even yeah. like attack it from any angle. It's just it's a bit like attacking Death Warmed Up. Well, what? Death Warmed Up will just fall apart when you just if you punch it. To be honest with you, but I mean, um... I mean Tri- Triterabot is definitely durable enough, but yeah, yeah. I still I can imagine I mentioned it you know earlier in the review, but I still can't understand how they managed to get them stuck in a position where they couldn't self write a robot that's supposed to be invertible. It just well, I mean, <laughs> well, no, because they, they had they had the angles, didn't they? They had the angled armor, so that's why that's why it just fell apart. If it, if it, if it, was, if it was rounder, it wouldn't have happened. But it's just it's just funny just seeing it stuck there and like turning the wheels in vain to try and get this right, and it's just like it it doesn't like just can't self write, and it's just kind of. Stuck there, and then the, and then the house robots decide to be really horrible and just cut bits off it and stuff. And yeah, I mean, there's there's a certain cruelty in this series, particularly where the house robots will go after a robot even when they're in the pit. <laughs> yeah, they never did that after this. I mean, obviously the pit got a bit deeper in um in series four onwards, didn't it? But uh, yeah. yeah. And there's multiple occasions where they just didn't seem to care for the fact the robot was already out, and it's like where Judge Shred got the same treatment. Uh, actually, even while Willie got a little bit of attacks from the house robots earlier, so yeah, there's, you're not even safe even when you're out. <laughs> yeah, you know, but, if, if if you're out, just as well as the fact that your robot's not coming home. So, but either way, it doesn't take away the fact that Evil Weevil managed to get a good KO and um, try Terrorbot, and yeah, unfortunately, the triangular robot is out. We get to see uh, Mousetrap next series, but. Yeah, it's a shame you don't get to see a robot like this again because it's just weird. Yeah, you know, it was, I mean, obviously it was massively ineffective, but hey, you know, it was it looks cool at least. Hmm. And uh, the final battle was just another one. Where I just don't know what was going on. Was Undertaker versus Panzer? Just Undertaker dying half the time because it just kept spinning yeah. around yeah, in a circle. Yeah. This that, that was the thing, wasn't it? I mean, Undertaker never really stood a chance, so. No, it didn't. I mean, actually, it would have only, again. It would have stood. A, it would have stood a chance if it was fully working. But yeah, oh well, yeah, but it never stood a chance because it was dead. No, and I mean, it kind of epitomizes it where you see like the last few minutes of the battle where Panzer just kind of driving around normally, and Undertaker's just spinning in a massive circle, uncontrollably. Yeah. It's just like it's like uh, Mr. Punch. 
where it just yeah. spins around constantly. It's the same thing, and uh, I mean, nothing really happens in the battle a lot of the time. A lot of it's just kind of Panzo rising up on top of uh, the wedge a lot. Although it was quite funny seeing Undertaker almost get flipped over by the arena spike. Yeah, he was getting <laughs> flung up in the air. It was great, wasn't it? <laughs> it was like the first like few seconds of the battle as well. I mean, quite a quick battle otherwise. Yeah. Probably nowhere near quick as Crash and Asher and Firestorm, but... Just drive forward, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, also a lot of... Also, I know Griffin's the one of the best, you know, one of the best takedowns of the series as well, but against... Um, uh, service against Griffin, but that's still my favourite moment. Poor old uh, Ollie Steeples, God bless him. Oh, well, he's got Star Wars, he's fine. <laughs> no, he doesn't, do, he doesn't do Star Wars anymore, he's had enough of it. <laughs> oh, is he? Apparently. Oh, well, he had Star Wars anyway. Yeah, he, he, he made R2-D2. Who can, say, who, can, who can say that in their life? Uh, Kenny Baker. Well, he's dead now, but you know what I mean. <laughs> he could. I mean, you can say they built they built R D two for a for for a Star Wars movie. Not many people. Not many people. He can. But getting off track here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Panzer won because Undertaker wasn't working properly, and obviously we go to the side event before pinball! we get pinball, and we get to see Oblivion two, and I. Can I just say I, I don't know if I, I was in did I do their heat last series I don't remember but if I did I love this. Like family, and I love their robots. The, I love the Belendron family and their machines. Um, obviously, Supernova, which you we know, we, as you know, you, you did um, Heat D with uh, with them, well, that's didn't you this year? Yeah, I did. James, uh, Supernova, and you know that that series of robots is just magical. Admittedly, though, I will say that Oblivion Two is probably the weaker link of all the robots they've made because it's not a bad robot. It's just never been reliable. <laughs> I mean, that's coming from Supernova as well, which would fling itself halfway across the arena, and then still Marvel will still work, you know, and I, then... Yeah, but but with Oblivion, I mean, Oblivion, again, you have to remember with um, these days, it was a, it was still quite a new technology sport. Hmm. Um, as well as that, you've got... Um, with, with Oblivion 2, I remember what, the, their ground clearance was so low that they, they if they their armor got bent, which is very likely because it was quite thin... Hmm. They just got stuck, didn't they? So that was that was yeah, probably hurt. It's, it's what happened in series. I mean, series three, they just sort of died in the middle of the pinball arena. It's, it's the only robot to break down properly in the pinball arena. <laughs> yeah, in this in series. And then it's obviously in series four. You know, as, as I just said, they had the the issue with the. Uh... Yeah, I was I was going to mention because they actually did lose quite quite weirdly in series four because it all 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 it took was a uh, saw point to drive onto them. Yeah, and that's saw point. That's not even like a really, really powerful robot. That's saw point. That's a robot with blades for wheels. Yeah. <laughs> and that somehow still managed to. I mean, it doesn't even look like it did anything. It just like it just drove on it like any other robot would. And then it yeah. just died. Now that, that was like four. That was one of the, one of the quickest KOs in the series at four seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's it, saw it point that did it. I find it weird that saw point is on that list of fastest KO robots. Saw point's amazing. I don't know what you're about. Saw point's uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Saw Point is overpowered in fairness. That's why they, that's why it's why they only appeared in two series. They had to kind of calm it down a bit. Yeah, two two OP. Yeah, two OP. But um, Oblivion Two, it's just. I think the only problem I don't like about Oblivion Two is also I, I think while I like the robot, it's just not very interesting to look at. It's just it is a box, and there's nothing really amazing to it. Like it's, I mean, the first Oblivion was just a wedge, granted, but Oblivion, I had the light at least. <laughs> <laughs> The, the precious light. Uh, I, I I like Oblivion too, but I I I do, I do love Sir and Blender and his t- and you know, all the guys who made you made Supernova because Supernova is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those robots where like you, you, when, whenever it goes in the arena, you know something's gonna happen. Also, screw copyright. I want to see the Superman logo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I like the new one. I like the new one that they, they designed for um, oh. for the series for the ninth series. I mean, the eighth series one obviously they must have just had to do it last minute, but the ninth series one's awesome. Oh, it looks cool, but I feel like it's like I I also know they'll never be able to do it again with copyright, but it feels like they're tr- almost, I actually associate it with just as much as Superman as them because I see. It, I mean, honestly, I saw that logo and I saw it before I knew who Superman was. Yeah. So I actually didn't know. I was like, oh, it's Supernova's logo. <laughs> Cause I'm just, okay. Cause, because I'm because because I'm because I'm a little idiot back in the day, clearly. But th- back in the day. Back in the day. Oh, thanks, oh. thanks, <laughs> thanks. Um, but even I'll hand in my notice at the end of this episode. Yeah. You, you were, you're not appearing next heat. Not appearing next oh, heat. Oh, I want to. I like the next I'm heat. Tough. tough. But also, before we get off this um, pinball tournament, two things. Obviously, they got 75 points, which isn't that bad considering they broke down. <laughs> They were doing well, well up until that point, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were doing well until they broke down. I think that's probably the reason why they didn't make it into the main series because they were just so unreliable with their armor and stuff. But also, yeah. Sir Killer Lot sets them fire again. 
I wonder if that'll happen again. Oh no, 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 no! It's, I mean, it's happened. It's happened with a pig. It's happened yeah. to get happened. In, actually, didn't that happen in another pinball tournament? Was that, or was that the pit? He fell. No, that was a pit. He fell into. And, yeah. um, that, that was in the first series. Sorry, second series, wasn't it? Something like yeah, that. If, yeah. I think it was Roblox Run. I think. Or something was like it, that. Yeah, he fell in the pit for someone, didn't he? Yeah, he's, he's got terrible luck with this kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, Griffith, they only got 75 points. Still not able to uh, top Dominator. Domi- I keep saying Dominator 2. Dominator. It's weird not saying Dominator 2. <laughs> Dominator. Is is Dominator. So they didn't manage to get them through. Dominator. Dominator. And uh, we'll get to the first battle. Which- so, um, Flip Flop Fly versus Evil Weevil. Honestly, yep. this is a very easy fight for, for, for them. I mean, I mean, let's face it, it's, it's kind of bullying, really, wasn't it? <laughs> It, it was. I wouldn't even call it bullying. I would just call it like just doing what you need to do to take this mediocre robot out. I mean, just drive into him all the time. Eventually, one of its tires will burst. I mean, Evil Weaver was always going to win this fight. Let's be realistic here. It will. It always was. But um, you know, it was. You know, it was. It was all right for what it was. For what it was, I enjoyed the fight. It was all. It was okay. I mean, at the end of the day, though, Evil Weaver just did what they needed to do and just take him out pretty easily. Um, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like Flip Flop Five was going to be able to do anything offensive to them. Yes. So, yeah, of course. You're right. Yeah. I mean it's pretty it was a pretty standard fight really. Nothing really that amazing. You know, nothing, nothing much nothing much happened and it was just it was a fight. This is honestly a lot of the fights. I, 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 was, I think the best fights were in the first round. I thought I'd yeah, say that. yeah, I think I think, you know f- for what it is, I think this heat as you say, the the, the robots are cool, the, ro- the battles aren't. Yeah. I think but, I, uh, but I think it's definitely what in that in that category. Yeah. Say, same with Heat P for me as well. But uh, heat pee. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get, get to that. We am, am, I, am I doing that one? I'm not. Am I? You are. Oh my! Oh my God! I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, go on. It's all right. Come on. All right. So, uh, Panzer versus Challenger two. Uh, a Again. lot. A lot. A lot of kind of Panzer driving on top of the wedge, and then eventually, to their credit, Panzer getting a very good push. Yes. On Challenger two and pushing him right into the pit, and then once again, my. You know, point proven that the house robots will attack you even when you're in the pit. <laughs> How rude! And they just and they and they did and they attacked poor Challenger, and we never saw Challenger again, which is quite a shame, really. It could be worse though. It could have been Willy Wacker where they're in the pit and then they dragged him out of the pit to do more damage to them. They did that to Robo Chicken in Series Six, didn't they? Yeah, it's just what is going on with these house robots sometimes? The mad. We need a ref bot, I tells you. And that was when they had a ref bot. <laughs> I know they had a ref bot back then. <laughs> they still oh, didn't God. do it. Oh, oh but yeah, nothing really, ha- really amazing happens in this battle. It's just a good push at the end. Yep. Uh, and Challenger Two didn't see it coming. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be able to see it coming anyway, because I would have thought I would have thought Challenger Two had this battle. Yeah, but, exactly. Well, it proves not everything is predictable on Robot Wars. And that's very true. Also, what's not predictable is a heat final that doesn't really happen. It wasn't a heat. It wasn't a heat final. <laughs> it wasn't even a battle. It was just. Nope. It was as it was on par with Terra Australis and Max Damage as Klaus's battles. Yeah. Because yeah, Panzer didn't move. Um, it didn't move, and it's it's a shame because I think it could have been quite an interesting fight. But I think ultimately the robot that was going to win the heat won the heat. It's it's a, such a it's a bit of a shame though, as I said. But at the end of the day, if something's not working, then you can't really do anything about it. Yeah, you know, nope. the way it goes. It's, it's just the way it is. I mean, look. I mean, look at. Um, I mean, the only example in the modern series where this happens is Cherub against Eruption. Well, where... Cherub was still mobile, technically. Technically, but the wheels weren't. The, well, one, only one wheel was working, so it wasn't able to really go anywhere. But here, I mean, the, I mean, this is one of three battles this series where the robot just doesn't move at all, and it's just yeah. It's, it's, I can't even call it a battle. It's it's it was a it was a evil evil drives forward and wins. Yeah, although it did give some good footage for Sir Killer to use his spin. <laughs> yeah, I mean that footage used a lot of them spinning Panzer around particularly. Yep, because they it's, were hung out. To, they were hung out to dry. They were, but um, yeah, I mean I would be talking about the heat final now, but I'm not. I can't. So that was that was heat L. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think of this heat overall? Well, I, as I said already at the start, this is the first heat I ever watched. Um, so it's always going to hold a little special place in my heart. Realistically, it's not that great, but it's still it's I still enjoy it for what it is. And you know, um, that's the that's the thing. You know, the robots are the robots in them are really cool. You know, we get to see a lot of them again. Hmm. Um. But yeah. Out out, out of ten, what would you? Uh, okay, so for nostalgia, ten. 
mm-hmm. obviously straight up. But um, realistically, probably about a six. I'd probably give it a four. Yeah, four, five, six, around that kind of. It, it was it was average. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. I think the robot designs are the only reason I'm not giving it a three or a two. Honestly, if the robot designs were kind of meh, it would be down, it would be right in the two section. It'd be like heat. It'd be like um, it'd be like heat heat L of um series two, which you yeah, uh, which yeah. Anthony Anson went through, and it's say, that that was definitely a two because yeah. of how bad it was. Um, but yeah, I think four satisfactory. But anyway, we'll move on to the uh, preview of Heat M. Thankfully, which, I've, which, I've, which I'm also here for, which is great. You know, yes. I'm looking, forward to, I'm looking forward to doing that. This this is a really good heat. Yeah, actually, the next three heats in a row are absolutely brilliant. They're on par with Heat J, in my opinion. Yeah. Just, uh, just... As, as, as well as that, I, I had this. I still have this somewhere in my in my house. Um, this on video video cassette. I do. I say I tape this uh, episode. Wow. All it's it's, still, it's, you still it's, have it. St- still works as well. I think. Wow. <laughs> that's dedication. Yeah, there was there was this, and I I was gonna tape over um the next heat as well, but I never did. So mm. yeah, it was, he 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 he's pretty cool. Can you can you believe so he, that he, can, he, 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 he M even? Can you believe that he M is just over seventeen years old? Yeah, it's crazy, right? Oh man, my god. But we're going through robots, and uh, I'll start with the heat winner, of course. Um, <clears throat> Scutter's Revenge. I uh, love Scutter's Revenge. I, this is this this is my favorite of the Spawn series. Really, I prefer Spawn or Scutter, but I no, like this, I, this, I like this is, my, this is my favorite because I mean I, I love the paint scheme. I think that looks. I, I love the scoop. It's very unique, um, and it's just it. It's slow, but it it has so much torque that it just pushes everything. It's great. And it's, it's well driven as well. They they knew how to drive this robot very well. Yes. I think I think its advantage was it was because it was a bit slow. It was easy to control. Yeah, and also true, yeah. both its fights are very dominating. Like literally, I, I think this light fight, both its fights e- lasted e- less even, like even 30. against even against Pussycat, it was on top until it broke down. I think both its two fights leading up to Pussycat lasted about thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Scott's Revenge obviously uh, made they they later make uh, Spawn of Scutter in Series Four, which I'm I like personally slightly more because I like I like the idea of the spike wedge thing. I really like that's a really good concept. I think like it's actually a unique flipper. Yeah, and it actually could do damage as well, even under electronics and stuff. And I I really don't like spawn again. I I really don't like spawn again. I like I, series seven spawn again. I don't like series five and six spawn again. Um, I just I have issues. I hope I get to do spawn against heat in series six because that I can I can I book that now. Yeah, you can already. It's ages away. But you might as well. Because yeah. I want that heat because that heat gives me. Some it gives me a hernia. That's what it gives me. It, it gives it, me some severe issues. It does it for me just for the fact that Supernova didn't didn't win. Spam would have won that heat. I'm convinced of it. Spam would have won the heat. Spam was the best robot ever. It was. It was amazing. I love hmm. Spam. Also, <laughs> also fun fact about Scutter's Revenge. Um, until I started watching Red Dwarf, I had no idea what the hell Scutter was because I couldn't find a robot from Series Two or One called Scutter. Yeah, I was it, like, where's it was, Scutter? It was, it was from Red Dwarf, and the, this is the second robot based off Red Dwarf. The other one being Inquisitor. That's true. And I, yeah, because I, I never watched Red Dwarf when I was younger. So I was like, I have no idea what this Scutter thing is, and I couldn't remember a robot called Scutter from Series yeah. One or Two. So I just assumed it was like a robot that didn't make it in. And then no, I was like, it was, and, yeah, it, it, was, it was, yeah, it was Red Dwarf. It's even on the side of the robot, a Scutter. Yeah, so... it's great. I love, I love, it. and it's fantastic. And I, I love the fact that they did it for for Craig Charles. Actually, it works quite. It's a cool name as well, Scotter's Revenge. So in, Scotter's it, Revenge. So yeah. in, in, even like me, if you have no if, prior to the when I was watching it at the time, I had no idea what the series was of the series. It's still a cool name on its own right. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, now the robot that would have been the Heat winner because of reasons, um, <laughs> uh, Pussycat. The first appearance of the legendary Pussycat, and of course. The time we truly get to see David Gribbles driving for the fullest, we really. I mean, well, in, yeah, we, we did get to see it in um with Body Hammer, did we? But we uh, we did get to see it with uh. We saw it uh, briefly in the um internet battle inter interaction, but we didn't really get to see anything really good because they just uh, they were Body Hammer in series one and two, and they got very lucky in series one, honestly. And in well, he was he, he didn't drive in series one. No, no, really yeah. oh, I'm, 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 I'm not saying it was. I'm saying in series one they got very lucky, and in series two they got really unlucky by the fact they got stuck on the ram rig and couldn't go anywhere and yeah. it didn't really get to show what david david gribble was all about and this this series of pussycat granted it doesn't have the patented blade on it it just has a generic round blade on it but in series four onwards when oh. when, when, when they when they when they design when robert Bessington was it, no was it robert Bessington? yeah it was wasn't it yeah and so robert Bessington, when he designed that blade that was a work of art it's up there. It's up there with the um, Hypnodisc disc 
It's just like these kind of like it's, 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 it's an iconic weapon that like you know how so you um you, I think it was uh I can't remember which which robot you wrote about a few weeks ago, but it was a robot that only they could have that weapon. Oh yeah, I'm trying to think who it was now. I can't remember now, but yeah, and only that. That machine could have that weapon. Only uh, oh, I was, could have that. I was thinking of a panic attacks forks. That's what it. Oh, okay, yeah. So the uh, only only pussycat could have that blade. Hmm. It's patented for a reason. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I I know I know uh, King B had a similar blade in a later series. It had a two. It had the two tooth one, didn't it? But um, yeah. It's just it a... was it was it was great. I I loved I love pussycat. It's a beautiful robot. It's funny because they went from a robot like um. Body hammer, which had no ground clearance, so a robot that has all the ground clearance, and like they went to the opposite extreme. Yeah. And I, I, I love the fact it's, I love the concept of this robot, Pussycat. Is the fact it's a robot that always lands on its feet. It bounces it, it self right every single way. It's amazing. Honestly, so I think personally, Pussycat is one of the best designs of all time for a reason, because yeah. it is just it's so well made, it's so durable, and it's always reliable. This robot is reliable. It never has it actually ever broken down in its history. Breaking down? No. Did it get knocked out? In, I think it got knocked out in extreme. I think by a that, tornado. Actually, I think it got. Didn't it get like a wheel removed or something in a battle? It got. A, it got. A, got a couple. That happened a couple of times against a tornado, didn't it? But, yeah, um, and also it got, it got its disc ripped off by Fluffy. Before. But... I, I, for, again, fun story. I was. I was in the crowd for that fight. I. I saw the uh, heat finals of series five and the semi final first rounds of series five, and I saw that fight, and I was like, Oh wow. my god! That's lo- Fluffy. That, you're lucky. <laughs> oh, oh, that was the we, we we got lucky that day. I'll, 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 if we get well, when, we, when we get to series five, I'll tell tell more stories about that. But um, when they did when they did that, um, I thought Fluffy had won that, but obviously everyone did. It was crazy. Hmm. But um, Pussycat in series three, I I, I think it was it, it was it was never gonna do that well because it obviously only had the circular saw. Yeah. But it was still a pretty cool robot. Yeah, it's it's a very good robot, and obviously Series Four is where it really picked. I mean, hell, they came second. Yeah. In Series Four, that says a lot. For them. I mean, they could have done decently well in their in the. Own... They knew they 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 nearly won. They could they could have won that series quite easily if uh, if their disc wasn't damaged uh, against Hypno Disc, then they they would have um. Yeah. They could have been, They could have quite easily beaten Chaos too. G- gentlemen's agreements aside. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, obviously, of course, we have uh, the, the return of the um, second seeds, Cassius Two. Uh, I I adore Cassius Two, but I, um... I, I like it actually. In some ways, Cassius Two is both an upgrade and a downgrade because I, I think the the flipper is better. It's wider, yeah. has more reach on the distance though, worse armor. Um, Not really. I mean, I mean the the first. The, it was. I mean, it was kind of same standard, wasn't it? Really. Uh, what I want to know is obviously Mick Cutter joining this team from Chaos. Yeah. You know, Chaos goes from being an all polycarbro to you know having a bit of you know black poly polycarb. You know. Hmm. Did, did Mick Cutter have like a warehouse full of polycarb? That's what I want to know. Because like, uh, uh, he must have owned a polycarb company. Because look at Robot the Bruce as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, every every team that Mick Cutter was in. Had a shitload of polycarb on it, and it was. Did he did he have a patent on it? it was, is it him? I don't know. Did, also, they had that. He, also, they had that. They had that spike on the back, which did helps him go. Hey, hel, hel, helps him. Was, helps him go out of the pit anyway. <laughs> it was. You know. It was. Um. It was something different, wasn't it? You know. It was a weapon that they had to do a little bit of damage. Yeah, and the whole reason Cassius Two went out is because of safety reasons. Which we'll get to in the next team. I think we'll that, get to that, that's, 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 a, that's a long discussion point. Of course, but we'll, we'll, that, that is briefly why we never see these guys again, unfortunately. Um, now, another another robot that will eventually gain slightly overrated stardom, but still get, pretty good. Get, they, they, they get good. They get good, and, if, and also it's the um, first of the barnyard animals, Thermidor. Uh, fun yep. fact about Thermidor is that the reason why this robot is spelt Thermador and not Thermidor is it's because the team captain David Harding misspelt Thermidor, <laughs> and, then, and then and then and then it was given to them, and then he, he, he and, and someone said to him, "You spelt Thermidor wrong." And it was by then the robots, you know, the editing was done. He's like, "Oh, so yeah, so, he, so, so so in the future they got it right." Yeah, they got it right. This Thermidor too for the rest of the series, but the fact it's called Thermidor. No, no, because I, I get it because it's Therm as in hot because it was hot stuff. No, oh, that, that was obviously the reason why. No, <laughs> but. Obviously, this version of Thermidor is nothing compared to the rest of the other Thermidor series, which is obviously better because it actually has a weapon on it. 
I mean, this has a disc and the little grabby things. I mean, it's it's a nice looking robot, granted. But... It looks great. I mean, this, I mean, I I think this one looks the best out of all of them. That's just me. I mean, I I don't dislike Thermidor and Thermidor Two. Hmm. Uh, I think you know, I think Thermidor Two looks great, and it was really unlucky in series five and six. Um, but you know, it was it was a good robot. It was it's it's perfectly fine. It's fine. I mean, it was it was definitely clear though in series eight though being outclassed over the years. They didn't change anything. Like, no. language, like I, I remember, um, I remember listening to Inside the Bot about this, um, and they they were saying about how, uh, how apparently um, David Harding from the Thermal team didn't know what Hardox was, and I was like, "Wow, what? really?" <laughs> apparently, I don't know how true that is. That's that's supposedly what he, uh, what they said, but um, yeah, but it's it's, it's kind of crazy because that. It was a really compact robot. They managed to fit all this stuff inside it, and it was, there was no room in there. How how did they get everything inside it? Is it uh, obviously, 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 robots are compact now, but that's because p- components are smaller. Whereas back in these days, they were huge. So how hmm. did they fit everything in? I, I don't know, but so, I think Thermidor is a ni- all the Thermidor robots are nice looking. Yeah. Oh god, I, I love the look of Thermidor Two in Series Eight because it had the, the fluorescent paint. It was really cool. Also, I think Thermidor is the oh, Thermidor Two is the only robot. I think obviously in Series Four, the only robot to uh, flip off a flipper. <laughs> yeah, call it the wedge hog. Yeah. yeah, their their flipper went through the wedge. Yeah, <laughs> that's power. Yeah. I mean, that's probably because of crap arm in fairness, but still, <laughs> it's yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, then we go from a lobster to a crocodile. Because we have Dundee, and I like, I like again Dundee in another heat. Dundee could have done really well. Yes, but of course, as fate happened to be, they went against they Cassia. Cassius again. Right, because obviously, if you didn't know, this is Loco, and of course, they come back and they think, oh, we'll make, we made a better robot. A robot actually looks really good. It could do some damage. It can actually, you know, be 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 effective. And then Cassius. Right, was someone planning this? <laughs> was, so, was someone out to get these guys? Because it feels like I, I feel bad for them. They 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 were it's very unfortunate. Yeah. This, this robot is, is fast. It has a nice weapon. It's got you know, it's got a lot of maneuverability. It's pretty cool looking. It's nicely made, and it's you know, decently driven. And then oh, one one flip to end it all. Yeah. And I feel so, this, this is one of the biggest. I mean, it's up there with like Scarab. To me, like when those robots are just like really could have done well in another heat or well, Wild Willy even, but then something happens, and then you never see him. You never see him again. Really, yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, obviously, we have Zeus. <laughs> now, the Zeus. I, I know because you, you you're not really a, a big fan of Zeus. You think Zeus is pretty woeful, and it is. But I like the look of Zeus. I thought it was really quite. It's quite a little tiny robot. I mean, it has a nice idea with the scoop. And, I mean, the axe is kind of pathetic really but it's not the worst robot in this series not by a long 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 way uh no it's not but yeah i still don't like zeus yeah <laughs> i I, d- well, I don't I'll, know I'll, I mean... I'll, let, I'll let you have your opinion on this one james uh it's not bad but y- y- did you say you like the design of zeus or i think it looks all right yeah i think it looks all right yeah i i find it really boring it's just a boxy a black box with a bit of a, a bit of Cleo bit of see through stuff on it and little wedge and the the act, tiny little axe and the little little tiny wedge. It's powered by an airbag, so you know it's gonna be really powerful. Yep. Uh yeah, I don't know, I just no, I never liked Zeus. I mean it, granted it's not the worst again, it's definitely not the worst thing ever. It looks competent at least, but I yeah, I, I, I still don't like it. <laughs> just don't care. I mean at least, at least this battle lasted like what, like ten seconds or something, so it's not like a big deal. Don't, we see Kronos later on in Series Four, and they. I like Kronos. Oh, no, 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 I like I, I like Kronos though. I like Kronos. They were just very lucky they were against Crusader Two and Steg Two because. I also like the fact that they've got Greek gods as their names. That's cool. Shame. I don't think they ever tried again. I don't think. I don't know. Uh, I, 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 uh, no, yeah. they, no, 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 they didn't. They just did Kronos and Zeus. Yeah, okay. Also, also a little fun fact. It's mentioned on the wiki. Until uh, Zorro in Series Seven, they were the last robot in alphabetical order. Until Series yeah. Seven. Oh, well, okay. So there's, there, there's a pointless fact that the wiki guys have decided to tell us. <laughs> Yay for the wiki! <laughs> and, and Anderson, get on it. He's yeah. w- wasting enough life on the wiki. Why, why not waste some more? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then we have Hammerhead, a robot made named purely because of its hammers, not because of its shark. No, so uh, again, Hammerhead was a good machine, and in, in, in another heat could have done quite well. It's a, it's a nice robot. Um, Unfortunately, they just had the disadvantage of being in a in an arena with plywood four. Here's the thing, though. 
it, it, look at this. Every uh, it's sort of like in the uh, Heat J. Every robot's a good robot. Yeah, I think it's very similar to Heat J in a lot of respects. Like unlike, I mean, Heat N, it's good, but there are some robots that are clearly not going to get food the first round, like Crippler or something like that. But then this this one, for the most part, has a lot of very good robots in it. And a lot of good variety. Yeah, a lot of good variety as well. And I feel sorry for Hammerhead because I actually quite like Hammerhead. Yeah, it was uh, quite quick around the arena floor. Had four wheel drive. You know, it's, it's good stuff. Hmm. Actually, also fun fact: Orax, Orax Revenge originally failed to qualify with a robot called Hammerhead. All right. Odd. odd. Now, now, now you know. <laughs> also, it's the only robot I've ever seen in my life that actually uses a real life hammer for the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> they just stuck a hammer on it, and that's our weapon. Yeah. But... Standard, really. Also, it fired decently fast for a Series 3 hammer. It was like Excalibur level. Yeah, it was pretty good, wasn't it? It was a decent enough hammer, wasn't it? So, it, I it, like Hammerhead. It was, just, too, it was cool. just the, the arena floor was too weak for it, unfortunately. And yeah. they, they used it as an excuse, but I agree with them. The arena floor was their undoing. Should have entered Series 8. Should have, should have entered Series 8. <laughs> and, of course, it's... You... We are the crew and we're going to tell you we're going to bash them. We're going to trash them. In the wars, you know, we're going to smash them. The forecast bad. <laughs> then they get running. You better watch out. There's a blunt storm, storm coming. coming. Oh Jesus! Had to say it. Had to say it. Blunt... I love Plunderbird. Well, this is Plunder Storm. Well, Plunder Storm. Plunder Storm. And oh, I love these guys. How can you hate these these guys? They are just amazing. They are wonderful entertainment. Uh, unfortunately, their robot this series wasn't so wonderful. Uh, N- they had, no. They had some issues, but um. Also, it's, it's, it, it does kind of ruin the rhythm, doesn't it? Plunderbird one, Plunderbird two, Plunderstorm, Plunderstorm, Plunderbird four, <laughs> Plunderbird five. I mean, it, I mean, it was it was Plunderbird three essentially, wasn't it? So, I, uh, granted, I do like the look of it. Like, unfortunately, I had to go had to get rid of the, the saw because of shattering reasons. But yep. um, it, it, I mean, this ro- the man, this robot got very unlucky. It broke down right at the beginning. Yeah. And it just and it one track stopped working, then the full robot stopped working, and it lost to a a, 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 a lobster they could have easily beaten. Yeah, this this is again another case of Plunderbird had an opportunity to do well in this heat, but they couldn't quite have the their robot was. I think this is because the, their robot was all new, wasn't it? And they it was still kind of testing it. Yeah. Also, it, they they follow the trend of of their robots of losing in the first round in the odd numbered series. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the best they ever do is series two, but it's. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I quite, let's face it, the team is better than the robots. Oh, that, you know, I, I, I love Un- unlike Plunderbird's unlike fabulous. unlike Deertor, where the robot is actually decently competent and it actually works a lot of the time. These robots never have consistency, but I don't care. I mean, the only the only time the only time I think they got really unlucky was going against S three in series five, where they just got they got ripped. smashed against S three, didn't they? Of course, it's the only robot they use for wheels. Of course, it's the one that gets the wheels ripped out of it. But yeah. oh well. Uh, and actually, also a little fun fact: the person who made the tracks for this robot was the one that was the woman off Terminal Ferocity, I believe. Oh, right. Yeah, she actually made the tracks for Plunderbird team, so there's something for you. Random <laughs> fact, in case you didn't... didn't, didn't... <laughs> there, there, there you go. <laughs> and it costs four grand. Oh. Ah. And it, can move, it can move faster than time. Yeah, it can. It's so fast, you can't. it looks, it looks like it's not moving. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very true. That's very true. We'll get uh, to that when we get to that. We'll uh, get to that. Time. Of course, that, that was heat M. That was heat L, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm Jim Dramatic, signing off. And I'm Sam Alexis. And we'll both see you next time for Heat M of Series 3. Bye.